Let's take a look at another demo, this time focusing on the proactive incident detection and cause analysis capabilities of our platform. Ravi, you ready? Yes. The Eternity Incident Dashboard displays all end-user incidents, open, closed, suspended, etc. within an organization. The list can be filtered by the state of the incidents, the applications that are associated with the incident, and by the time frame of the occurrence. And Google-like search capabilities can be used for rapid identification of an incident by almost any criteria. For each incident, we see the impact severity, a unique ID, the time the incident was detected, the application and associated transaction or activity that is impacted, and the business impact, the number of impacted endpoints, as well as the current state of the incident. The maximum number of impacted endpoints shows the total number of users who were impacted concurrently at any time throughout the entire incident. So, you know, the peak of business impact, all updated in real time. The group column is interesting because it shows which part of the user population is being impacted by a particular incident. And it also highlights version 5's ability to detect and escalate incidents based on specific groups of users, for example, corporate or lines of business, for example, casualty. Currently, we see that incidents have been detected for Outlook, for SAP, payment processing, and online trading applications. Ravi, let's drill down into the Outlook incident and take a look at the impact analysis details. The first section provides us with a summary. I'm running a little ahead of you. <laughs> the first section provides us with a summary of the details we saw on the incident list dashboard. Let's collapse that, Ravi, for now and get a bit more screen real estate. The next section provides us with some really powerful analysis of the impact of this incident. The pie chart shows us that a little less than a quarter of the total Outlook user population is impacted. By default, endpoints are grouped, impacted endpoints and, impact, and, and impact endpoints in general are grouped by location. But we can also group by department or office or other attributes such as operating system, machine type or browser. Grouping by subnet shows us the impacted users come from multiple locations, an indication that the problem is probably not network related. The probable cause for the incident points to multiple possible causes sorted by probability. The three probable causes identified with the highest grade are machine types with Windows XP Service Pack 1 operating systems, machines with 1 to 2 gigabytes of memory, and specifically Dell Latitude D620 machines. The most probable cause points to machines with Windows XP SP1 operating systems. And this is because the majority of impacted users are using XP SP1 and none of the non-impacted users are using XP Service Pack 1. The other two causes receive a lower probability score because although most impacted users have 1 to 2 gigabytes of memory on their machine, other users of Outlook with the same amount of memory are not being impacted by this incident. The same logic applies to users with the Dell 620s. Ravi, now that we understand the cause of the incident, let's dig deeper into the timeline of the incident and understand exactly who is impacted. The incident time machine allows us to navigate the timeline of the incident while analyzing the incident impact at any time throughout its life cycle. The A indicator denotes the beginning of the incident. Additional indicators will appear as the incident status changes over time. Moving the time bar across the incident's lifetime dynamically updates all the incident impact analysis components on the form, such as the table view of impacted endpoints below. Note the organizational information attached to each user that is dynamically integrated from the corporate directory. We can expand the detail level to get a view of the incident timeline for each specific user. We can immediately see the status of measurements of that endpoint throughout the lifetime of the incident. Clicking on any of the highlighted status blocks show us the actual measurements for each transaction or business process for that particular endpoint, as well as their deviation from either the automatically generated baselines or manually set thresholds. 
From here, we can either go to the navigator for further analysis or to the endpoint dashboard for that user. As we've already toured the navigator, Ravi, let's see what we can learn from the endpoint dashboard of, Lucy. of user Lucy. The first thing we glean from Lucy's dashboard is that she is using a physical workstation as opposed to accessing a session on a Citrix box or using a virtual desktop via VDI. The dashboard also provides us with a time machine capability, enabling us to get a snapshot of Lucy's status at any time throughout the incident, or even prior to the incident. A quick glance shows us that, use, that Lucy is using about, what, half a dozen applications and having some major issues with Outlook only. So let's expand the Outlook application view, Ravi, and drill down a little deeper. The activity section shows us each deviating Outlook activity Lucy has performed during our selected time frame and immediately highlights that performance for send mail to outbox is deviating we also see the correlation of desktop resource consumption and application transactional performance at any point in time throughout this incident toggling between viewing all activities performed or only those that are deviating give us a clear indication of what lucy's overall outlook experience has been throughout the duration of this incident not bad besides that one particular or two particular activities now drilling down into the host resources will help us identify whether host resource consumption is responsible for the poor outlook performance lucy is experiencing the attorney platform automatically identifies and presents the most deviating host resources with the time machine capabilities that you're already familiar with and it shows us that CPU usage of Lucy is very high and the available memory is low. When clicking on the CPU spike, the top process list immediately gets filtered accordingly and we immediately see that the search indexer process is causing the high memory consumption and that weather bug is the cause for the high CPU. Problem solved. 